Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to do much in the way of daily repairs because all the irons that are coming in have <laughs> been the ones I'd already done, believe it or not. But I'm, I'm going to do this one uh, just for the sake of it. This is a GHD 4.2. It's a slightly newer version. It's got this little raised ridge, I suspect, for a bit of grip where, you know, where the thumb is on the arm. Just a slightly different design. Everything else is totally the same. So we're just going to run through the procedure for checking these. Uh, customer complains of uh, aren't getting up to temperature and they just continue to bleep and uh, flash. So it's, it's quite a common problem. The first thing we're going to do is check the mains cable for any signs of damage. Really the best thing is your fingers for this, uh, just carefully check it. Uh, we've got a 3 amp fuse fitted which is fine, no damage to the cable or either ends here, so that's looking good. So uh, this particular pair I always do a, a quick rundown, we've got a little bit of wear and tear, some dirt, uh, a little bit of uh, wear on the plates, little scratches here and there, not too bad, a bit of wear and dirt down the sides, hinge caps are present but worn, uh, so not too bad. You certainly see a lot in far worse condition than this. We're taking the hinge caps off with just a little flat spudger. Occasionally the little tabs here will break and then that means we just have to super glue the covers back on. We're going to take a electric screwdriver. We've got a bit that's uh, wedged into the work surface. to easily undo those. We'll just push the hinge pin out, separate them out and then we'll take the switch side cover off. The fault is on the other side in this case but we always check both sides. You don't know what somebody may have done in the past. Mm, all looks original. So with the meter on a low ohms setting we're going to check the outer two screw contacts first. This is the thermal fuse and that is good. Now you're going to get a um, pretty much short circuit reading so uh, that's what you want to see there. Anything other than that change the thermal fuse and then find out why it failed. Uh, elements, they're 70 ohms approximately so we are getting a 34 ohm reading which means they are good. Switch feels good uh, but we are going to take it apart and clean it. This isn't going to show up on camera, but you put a thin screwdriver one side, just gently lever out the side, and then go to the other side and lever that out. Holding the central switch bit, just lift this away, and uh, that leaves behind the little nylon domed contacts. Uh, they press on the actual contacts, those bits, and they've got tiny springs behind them. Let's leave some fingers in the switch just tap your arm or your hand on the bench and they will fall out and in this case you can see a little bit of arcing has been going on inside the switch it's uh, common you know all switches will do this to some degree or other I just get a, the same flat blade and I scrape off that soot blow that out and then we get the fingers and we will just gently scrape that sit off so we're back to bare metal so we put that one finger back in there wipe off and scrape the sit off on the other one and back in I've just got to line those up again it can be a little bit fiddly they're quite small and then we hold the sides in to stop everything falling out and then just put that back over. It will only go one way round but best to um, put it on the bench the correct way. And that is that side done. So cover on. Screws back in. Being careful not to slip and scratch anything, especially this end when you're up near the ceramic plate, they are easily damaged. So back onto the other, sorry, back over to the arm where the actual problem exists. Now bleeping uh, and flashing can be a number of problems. Uh, two resistors here can fail, the control chip, the PIC processor can fail and also the thermistor uh, can fail. That's part of the element assembly on this side. 
And in this case, we can immediately see uh, a burn mark on the resistor here. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see it. That one's got a burn mark around it. Uh, this is a very, very common problem. Now, in my case, I am going to use some Ursa tweezers just to heat both ends up. This one's perfectly okay, but we uh, change it. This is the faulty one. Just waiting for the temperature to come up and gently lift it away. If you don't have tweezers, which you're highly unlikely to have, then you can flood each end with some solder and uh, just keep heating up each end of the resistor until you can flick it off. Uh, again, so flood solder each end, heat each end and flick it off when both ends melt. Uh, at this stage we will grab two of the resistors. These are the correct value but they are far higher quality than the original ones that uh, have been fitted to these circuit boards. Uh, we will apply a tiny amount of fresh solder onto the pads. Now if you're doing this with uh, a soldering iron just apply the resistor to the board and uh, sorry start that again apply solder to one pad for each resistor holding the resistor in one hand melt the solder and drop the resistor into place and then solder the other end and repeat the side in my case i'm using tweezers so i want both sides soldered together uh, yeah, obviously it makes it easier uh, for the quantity that we, I'm doing each day. But it's easily achieved with a uh, soldering iron. Now for me, we would normally check that there's no broken wires. If this side breaks an element wire, the irons will overheat and blow the thermal fuse. So I just check that there's nothing odd there. Quick look over, no problems at all. There's very little residue but we'll just clean that off. We could leave it. A little bit of ISO on there is uh, isopropyl alcohol 99.9% and that is spotless. Just making sure that the silicon rubber is in place. The repair companies forget to put these silicon rubber pieces back in. I don't know why but it's a real common problem I see every day from other companies who've done past repairs. I just don't get it. If it's in there, put it back. They are all there for a reason, uh, generally safety reasons. Um, so why you would leave anything out, I've no idea. Another trick other companies do is to not replace both resistors. They'll only replace the resistor that's actually blown, causing the problem. And in six months time, you could well find that the other resistor has then failed and the customer's got to pay for another repair. Um, just because the original repairer was uh, lazy or too tight to fit two new resistors. In fact, we change these two resistors on every single pair that come in, whether they, they're faulty or not. I know they will fail at some point because they're a weak spot, uh, and I don't want the customer coming back in six months' time with you know a different fault because I was too lazy uh, to change those resistors or too tight to change them. So with the spring clip, down, we lower the other arm into place and then squeeze them together like that. They're under tension, dropping in the pin. If it doesn't go all the way through, you can put a screwdriver in this side and just wiggle it around so everything lines up so it looks like that. And what we do, whoops, what we do here is we do not over tighten this screw uh, and pin because they uh, can be very tight in the future especially if they get slightly corroded so we will just gently nip this up it doesn't need to be over tight if they get corroded they can be a nightmare to undo especially for people at home we have a impact driver here if required uh, and that is pretty much it uh, so in this case we will now fire them up switch on this model bleeps once and the red light becomes solid 
when they are up to temperature they'll double bleep and um, the LED will then just flash continuously. Now, sometimes these hinge caps will break the little plastic tabs. That one is good and that one is also good so they will just go back in without any problems. If uh, anything becomes broken, a little, tab of, a little drop of super glue. That is correct operation there. Double bleep flashing. Whilst that's still on, we're going to take a K-type thermocouple, pop it in between the two and get a reading. In this case, it is a 187, which is absolutely spot on. Uh, 186 is the expected temperature, sometimes a little bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher than that. Up into the uh, mid to low 990s would be uh, classed as acceptable. You know, anything more than that, then the thermal fuse is going to start to get weakened and uh, will uh, fail at some point. Uh, at this stage, we will spin and tug the mains cable. Sometimes there's an internal break at either end, not generally down the length of the cable, but certainly at this uh, elbow. Uh, if there is an intermittent connection, you will hear this bleep go off. That lens fine. We're going to do the same with the plug end. Yep, no issues there whatsoever. Uh, so we're going to unplug that. Uh, we're going to plug it into the pat tester. We're on obviously a double insulated class 2 test and uh, I'm using the 500 volt insulation voltage. It's switchable between 500 and 250, I think it is. Uh, so test 81 and that is a pass so we are done so yeah very simple straightforward and common uh, problem with uh, this model but uh, do check that there are uh, re you know sometimes there are reasons those resistors fail they can fail on their own but other times it can be caused by sparking in the switch sparking in the mains cable area the mains cable socket area uh, faulty mains cable uh, dodgy uh, plug, dodgy socket that these go into, or you know, so perhaps somebody's using an extension lead, or they've been used overseas where the uh, adapter is a bit wobbly. Any sort of sparking can uh, cause those resistors to fail. Um, so do check for uh, a cause. Okay, so there we go. 4.2s. 